We're starting to address the challenges of the mobile internet and the mobile web. And I would argue a lot of what we're seeing in terms of how the web is evolving is really driven by mobile and by the properties of mobile devices. So some of these things are things we've already talked about, but it's good, not a bad uh, time to review. So for example, I've got a mobile device and it's connected to, it, it can have the ability because it has multiple radios, an LTE radio and a Wi-Fi radio, to connect to two different types of access point. So this is my LTE access point up here, this is my Wi-Fi access point up here, and as I move from place to place, I wanna be able to maintain connections across, um, ro as, as I roam from one network to another, I also wanna be able to combine two different connections with two different IP addresses to two different networks that make up the internet and to use that combined network effectively. So now we have something, uh, you know, a new version of, of TCP that's called MPTCP or Multipath TCP. That's been built specifically to enable these types of scenarios. And as we see that start to be deployed, it's gonna be much, much easier to build applications that take advantage of multi-homing and multiple uh, network connections that I can establish over multiple wireless radios. So, okay, good. Uh, what about the web? So, there's quite a bit of what's called responsive design uh, that's starting to go on on the web space, uh, figuring out how to make things look good on mobile devices. But there's also, pl there's also some plumbing things that we're changing. So, HTTP2. Um, or what started off as speedy proposed by Google, this idea that uh, in order to reduce latency on multiple devices, not requiring them to open up a bunch of connections to a web server to retrieve content, instead allowing them to multiplex all their requests over the same uh, stream, that means that I get more bandwidth, it reduces the latency of having to establish connections, and in certain cases, um, we're actually also going to start seeing the web server pushing resources at the client that it knows that it needs. So when I load a web page, why do I have to ask the server for all the different parts of the web page? It can parse the web page, it can figure out that I need a particular JavaScript file or a particular piece of CSS, and it is going to start sending those files to me before I even ask. So that's really awesome because it's going to reduce the amount of round trips that are required to assemble a web page and on mobile devices those round trips tend to be expensive in terms of latency. So that's going to help. Um, we're also seeing efforts to try to kind of improve, so here's the problem, um, relying on people that run websites to improve their websites is a tough sell because a lot of those websites are out of date, nobody maintains them anymore, and so what do we do to improve their performance? So. If you use the Chrome browser, you have the option, I think it might even be enabled by default now, to use um, a tool that was actually built by my advisor who now works at Google that's called Flywheel. And what Flywheel does is it's a proxy that sits in between your computer and the web servers that you visit. And it does something very simple, which is that it compresses the content that's sent to you by the web server. You would think this was so um, obvious, you know, why not, why don't all web servers naturally compress content? Why do I want to compress things because it means that that content consumes less bandwidth, I pay less for it if I'm paying for bandwidth, and it arrives on my device faster. But there's a lot of websites out there that are hosted by people that haven't made these simple changes. And so by putting a proxy in the network, this proxy is fixing problems with these existing sites and helping them work better on mobile. Um, so that's sort of some examples of the different ways that uh, we're starting to see the web evolve to better support mobile devices. And these are pretty fundamental changes in the plumbing of the internet. You know, we have a new transport protocol, MPTCP. This is also a place where QUIC, the, the underlying, uh, trans the new transport protocol that Google is experimenting with comes into play. Very much designed around the needs of mobile devices. Um, HTTP2, so the new version of the HTTP pr application level protocol that's used to serve web content. Again, Again, very much designed around trying to improve performance for the mobile web. And maybe at some point in the future we can just stop talking about the mobile web entirely because the mobile web is the web. There is no non, you know, they're, they're, the non-mobile web is the minority out there today. And it's time to start realizing that, update the internet, and better support the types of devices that most people that connect to the internet are using.